Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. My name is Tensor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Flutter's Shared Preferences plugin. We're also going to be looking at dismissibles and we'll look at the Flex widget and a few other things. Shared Preferences is a persistent store of SIPL data that makes use of the Shared Preferences Android plugin as well as the NS User Defaults for iOS plugin. The data is persisted to the disk and it is asynchronous, which is pretty cool. For our purposes, we can just think of Shared Preferences as a very small key value storage device that you can use inside of a Flutter application. It is not recommended that you use it for large amounts of data, but rather just for very small amounts of data that you just want to cache. To get shared preferences into your application, just go into your pubspec.yaml file and add shared preferences as well as the version number, which at the time of this video is 0.4.0. .0. We can now jump into our application and import shared preferences by importing the package shared underscore preferences, shared underscore preferences dot dart. Okay, so now let's set up the skeleton of this application. Our root widget will be a material app widget with a scaffold. We'll have an app bar with some text that just says Flutter shared preferences example, and then we'll point our body towards home. Our home class needs to be a stateful widget. And of course we'll override the create state function and point it towards a state class. So essentially the application that we're going to be building here will have a text box at the top and we'll have a button. The user will enter in some text, click the button, then the text will be added to a list and then we can swipe to dismiss that text from the list. So in a way it's sort of like a to-do app but I wouldn't really even call it that. It's more just like a list app. And we'll be passing our data around using our shared preferences key value store. Now because shared preferences is asynchronous, we need to also import Dart async, and we need to set up a global variable for our shared preferences instance. To do this, we wrap the shared preferences type inside of a future, and then we point it towards shared preferences.getInstance. Because we're going to be dealing with a text box, we want to have a text editing controller. This will allow us to get the values out of our text box, as well as manipulate the text box if we want. And we want this to be final, so we'll put in final text editing controller, controller equals text editing controller. Our last two global variables will be two lists of strings. One of them will be called list1, and the other one will be called list2. List1 will be the list that we use to push into our shared preferences, and then list2 will be the list that we use to get out of our shared preferences. We want to initialize the state for these two lists, so we'll override our init state function, and then we'll pass in list1 and list2, and we'll point both of these towards empty lists. So now let's build out the user interface for this widget. We'll start with a center because we want to have everything centered. The child for this will be a list view so that we can have the different elements sitting one after the other. Inside of our list view, the first few children will be our text field, which will point towards our controller and then have input decoration where we just have some hint text that says type in something. After that, we'll have a raised button. We'll give it a child of text that says submit. And then the unpressed will just be an anonymous function for now. If we load up our app, this is what it currently looks like. We also want to add a second raised button. We'll give it text clear and this will have a anonymous on pressed as well. The second button will allow us to clear all of our lists and our shared preference key value store so it will clear out everything inside of the list view. After we create our second button, we'll add a flex widget. The flex widget is very similar to the expanded widgets that we looked at in the last tutorials. The flex widget allows us to take up the rest of the space so if you look at how our current application looks, we have our text box and then our two buttons, and we want the rest of our content to fill out the entire box 
and we also want to be able to have it scroll up and down. The flexed widget requires a direction. In this case, we'll give it axis vertical, so it will go up and down. For now, inside of our flex for our children, we can put in our list to list, or at least we can check to see if it's null. And if it's null, we want to put an empty list in for the children. Otherwise, we want to take our list to list and we want to map on it. For each of the strings inside of this list, we'll create a text widget. And then we need to, of course, append to list at the end so that this will then pass in a list of widgets rather than multiple singular widgets. Let's build up the logic for this application. We'll create an asynchronous function that returns null, but of course it also returns a future, so we have to wrap our null in a future. We'll call this add string because it will be adding a string to our list and then adding it to our shared preferences. To get our preferences, we create a final variable called prefs and then we set it equal to our underscore s prefs variable. And of course, because this is asynchronous, we need to use the await keyword. All this basically means is that the prefs variable will not populate with anything until the s prefs variable is available. Then we can take our list one list and we can use the add method to add controller.txt to it. With our controller.txt being the text inside of our input box. As a side note, I just changed the list one and list two variables into camel case rather than snake case. And that's because Dart was throwing a few warnings as a result of them being snake case. Now we can take our list one and we can put it into our shared preferences key value storage. To do this, we call prefs dot set string list and this allows us to set a list of strings into our key value store and we can then give it a key in this case we'll just give it a static key of list and then we'll pass in list one we want to call set state and we'll put in our controller dot text and we'll set it equal to an empty string so that we clear out our text box after the user clicks the button and this function executes and even if we didn't need this functionality, we'd still call set state so that it would update the widget tree. Now down in our submit raised button, we can put our add string function inside of the on pressed function. Now let's create a function called clear items, and this will be for our second button. This also will be a future null async function. Inside of this function, we want to zero out our preferences as well as our two lists. So we take and we instantiate our final shared preferences value again, and then we call prefs.clear, and this will clear out the entire key value store. Then we call set state, and we clear out our list one and list two. And of course, like we did with add string, we can call clear items inside of the on pressed function for the clear button. Okay, so as it currently stands, if I open up our application and I type something in, say test, and I hit submit, even though it clears out the input box, nothing will show up in our body just yet. And that's because we're not updating our list to variable from our shared preferences yet. To actually make this work, we want to create a new function called getStrings. And of course, like our others, it is a future with a null in it, and it is also asynchronous. We also want to instantiate our prefs variable. And then to feed our shared preferences values into our list2, we just say list2 equals prefs dot get string list, and then we pass in the key, which is just list. Then because we want this to update the state and then update the widgets, we need to call set state, and we'll just pass in an anonymous function that does nothing. So just by running this, this will update our widget tree and then show us the list of items. We can then call our get strings function at the top of our build function before we return our UI elements. 
and this will make it so that this function gets called every single time this entire widget gets re-rendered, which is essentially every single time we set up this state. I can now put in a string and hit submit, and you can see it now pops down into our list. And I can keep adding to it, and of course it will keep adding to our list. And if we click the clear button, it will then clear out our list like that. Now let's implement the dismissibles for these particular list items. To do this, we want to render a dismissible widget rather than a text widget. So we wrap S in a dismissible, and we want each of our dismissible tiles to have their own key. So we put in key, and then inside of our key we pass in the string itself. Then below the key, we want to have an onDismissed function. This function takes in the direction that the user swipes the element in. And of course, this will be empty for now because we haven't created the logic for it yet. Our dismissible needs a child because it's just a layout object. And I'll give it a child of list tile. And we'll make the title for our list tile be text with S inside of it. Now if we go back to our app and we look at our list, it now looks quite a bit better. We can also swipe this element and dismiss it. However, if we do this, we're going to run into an error. So you can see now we have this error happening, and that's because we do not have our onDismissed function doing anything. So it's saying here a dismissed dismissible widget is still a part of the tree, and that's because the list still has the item inside of it. If I click the clear button, the error goes away, and that's because it clears out the lists and the shared preferences key value store. So now let's make the logic for our onDismissible. We'll call this function update strings, and again, this will be asynchronous, so we'll pass back a future with null inside of it. We also need access to our shared preferences, so we'll create our final variable preferences. We'll call on set state rather early in this function, and inside of this set state function, we want to call on our list number one, and we want to remove a string from it, with the string being a string that we're passing into this function. And then after we run this remove and remove the string from our list, we want to then put our new list back inside of our shared preferences list, which is inside of the preferences key value store. So we take list one, we put it into prefs set string list, and then we give it key list, and this will override the other list. Now the reason why we're using list one and not list two Two is because if we used list two and then we went to say add a new item to our list when we run the add string function it will grab list one which will not have the removed value from the old list and that will then update our preferences which will then force our list two to update with this old value and then it will cause an error so now inside of our on dismissed we call update strings and we pass in s, and this makes it so that each of our dismissibles has this function tied to it. Okay, so now let's open up our application. So again, I can put in a string, let's just call it test. I can put in another string, I'll just put in the, and then I'll put in app, so it says test the app. And we can now swipe the out of here, and it does not throw us an error. And we can do the same for the other elements like that. And if we hit clear, it will then clear all of our other lists as well. If we wanted to make this a little bit more foolproof, we could also come back into our update strings function and put a list to remove with the string inside of it. That way, both of our lists have the exact same values inside of them. So again, I can put some values in. So test the app right now, and I can swipe them out of here in any given order. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.